Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to be covering two Pico CTF challenges, strings it and first grep. Now, the reason we're covering these two together is that they contain two of the most useful Linux commands for beginners. Uh, the first being strings and strings extracts text information or basically strings out of a huge variety uh, of files. Now people mostly use it for executables or binaries as they're otherwise called, but it can also work on a variety of other compressed files. While grep also extracts text, but it extracts lines from a matching substring that you enter. So the solution to these two challenges that Stuffy and I are gonna do, by the way, he's a very experienced CTF player, are going to involve not only solving these, but also an in-depth discussion on both of these two useful functions. Enjoy. Okay, um, so we have finished with the collection of the sort of encoding challenges. And now we got strings. And this is interesting because we have used strings and this is, uh, this is like the ultimate shortcut to extracting text out of, is it mainly executable programs, but, or is it just like pretty much any files? Like could it's I pretty use... much any, any file. Yeah. It'll look for it, but it's, it's supposed to be for binary files, but it, it will look for strings in anything. That's the whole purpose of it. Will it have any success in like a zip file or something like that? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I believe it will, but I, you'd probably have to uncompress it first because okay. it would have to uncompress it by itself. Right, right, right. Um, so let's create a thing like there. SD. Okay. So now we're gonna w get this file. And there is something that I saw in other walkthroughs and I wanna ask you about it. So now like we've got strings and uh, like I've seen people write file strings. So what exactly does this um, tell me? Like what's the useful information that comes out of that? Like it's... Yeah, so, well, for one, let's see. So the file strings, so it's telling you number one, what kind of file it is. You can see it's an elf file right there. So elf is an executable on Linux. I don't know if, okay. uh, it, if you're familiar, but basically it's it's like exit. on Windows. Yep, on Windows, you're typing .exe. Mm. On Linux, if you ever want to make a, so you were asking earlier about the um, actual, not having those actual um, extensions built in, right? Well, mm. you can add the .elf, and then when you download it or whatever, it will come as an executable on Linux. You don't have to add that extra um, executable permission that you're... Now, some machines will, by default, just not allow that, and mm. then you'll have to add the executable, but it, it comes as an .elf file, which means it's uh, executable. Um, the x86 just obviously tells you what fit. Um, dynamically linked, that's not important here, but yeah, it looks like... Really, it's just giving you basic information about it. It looks like it's SHA-1 encoded, not striped. Yeah, it's just basic information about the file. Okay. So you so, can see permission denied. That just means that we never gave it the never gave it the executable permission. Okay. Now the so by looking at it, I would have thought something along the lines: this is an executable. Uh, maybe I should try executing it. Yep. But the whole notion here is that we're going to use strings, which is a, um, yep. the, the, the word you use is not definitely not a, a function or a method. It's commands, right? Like strings yep. is a command. Absolutely. And uh, you, can, you can also run, you can still run this file. You just have to add that permission to execute. It's just a, it's a default Linux thing that when, when cool. you download a file, it's not going to allow you to execute it by default. Um, now this is like terribly named. Um, that's the the thing that I hate about this challenge, <laughs> yeah. right? Like typing yeah. in string strings makes me feel like yeah. what? But yeah. no, this is a Linux command. Yep. And this happens to be the name of the, the file, file that we downloaded, yep. which is an elf executable. Yep. And it's going to print out all the strings within that executable file. Yep. And one of these and strings what you can, just to kind of throw together, add things. Um, like we've been kind of building upon. So you can do that same command. So mm -hmm. just hit up and then you can um, use a pipe and then grep 
and uh, the Pico CTF, and it'll give you just the Pico CTF ah. uh, line. So that, yeah. that's a way that you can kind of build upon the things that we've, we've been doing. So the, uh, you'll need the pipe. So like, I was just going to show you this, right? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That'll actually that'll write to that file. Uh, clear. So I'll show you how I solved it myself. So it was like okay. uh, string, strings, yep. strings, strings. Uh, and then this writes it to output.txt yeah. yep. and it creates output.txt for you. So yep. if you go LS, and now I go uh, like nano output.txt. And it was pretty bad because like I, I think I tried control F for some shortcut, uh -huh. but this time instead of like disappearing in the noise, it was one of them. I don't know if like uh -huh. control F would, would find something, but uh, not the best method. So, yeah, so, but it worked. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and th and that's really the key is if you can get it to work. Like you said, there's there's five different ways to beat all of these. So, but we um, want to do the pipe. So yeah, so, well, my the easiest way that I would do it to save yourself time and and not having to create a file would be the cat oh. the you can do the output. Um, you can cat the output since you've already saved it to it. Um, so one one second. I think now that uh, I know how to use Gret, uh, it's like this output dot txt. I'm pretty sure this is gonna. Yeah. There you go. Um, now, so the only the only difference, because that's exactly what I was saying, the only difference I would have done is just to save steps is instead of um, writing to the outputs.txt, you could do the string strings and then pipe and then the grep command, and it would have taken that string strings instead of writing it to a new file, it would have just automatically grep for that Pico CTF. So let's do that slowly and then pack it. Right? Okay. Because yeah. Basically, first I'm calling uh, strings on this file strings. And the output yep. of that is going to be like 500 lines of yep, random it's text. It's going to be the same as that output.txt file you showed. And I'm feeding that output as input into, this is like the pipe, yep. like the output of this process is going yep. as an input of the next one. Exactly. And I'm sending that into, you said grep? Yep, into the grep. And... And then, then the P oh, then I'm gonna do Pico CTF. Yep, then the Pico CTF, and that's it. And there you go. You get the same results. You just didn't have to save a file. And yeah, that's way better. Um, excellent. Um, so like I really gotta get again. It it does take. Uh, I think it takes a little while to get used to the, the piping, but I can Absolutely, so yeah. I could so imagine um, mm -hmm. this like over a year saving many, many yeah. hours. Yep. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend learning the the pipe and, and and really it's just learning Linux. Linux as a whole has its own, um, you know, mannerisms of things that you can you can use to your advantage. So like we got first grip here, first grip. That's the next challenge. Um, and I'm just gonna, Get out of here, and I'm just gonna make clear FG, and then we're going to w get the file here. So it says, can you find the flag in the file? Okay. Um, so I would imagine that this file they're talking about would be full of stuff. Yep. Uh, would be really too tedious to look through manually. So if we went cat file, yeah, I mean, they're absolutely right. So somewhere in there is our flag. And if we basically say grep, and then we're looking for, even if we just typed in Pico, like you don't have to, it's like a substring of the whole thing and you say file. Um, is there, I mean, I imagine, there would be a dozen frequently used sort of um, attack parameters here. Um, would you bother with anything, or this is pretty much? If I was just looking it. for, if I was just looking for that, then I would, I wouldn't even mess with it. I just do exactly what you just did, um, yeah. just because it's simple, it's easy. But there, there are ways. Um, so, like, Nmap's a good tool that that hackers use all the time.